Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Carry On, a podcast covering issues relevant to veterans and those who care about them. Carry On is brought to you by Nation's Finest. At Nation's Finest, our mission is to support America's military veterans and their families with a comprehensive approach to housing, health, and employment that helps them to achieve self-sufficiency and reach their full potential. With more than 30 locations in 15 communities across California, Arizona, and Nevada, each year we provide critical services to support more than 7,000 veterans and their families. If you or a veteran you know needs help, please reach out to us at nationsfinest.com or call 833-468-9676. Again, that's 833-468-9676. I'm your host, Mark Miller, Army Veteran and Communications Director for Nation's Finest. In today's episode, we have two guests who are both members of the team here at Nation's Finest at our, at our site in Carson City, Nevada, Melissa Ferrari and Wiley Mandeville. They're going to share some really interesting information with us about our mobile service units today, but first, a little background on our guests. Melissa has worked in the nonprofit sector for seven years now, and four of those years with Nation's Finest. Her Bachelor of Science degree is in Human Development and Family Studies. Melissa's grandfather was an Army veteran who served in World War II and Korea. His service helped to influence her career decision. Wiley spent 32 years in the Air National Guard. He also served as a game warden for the Nevada Division of Wildlife and as a biologist for the National Forest Service. He has a degree in zoology with a minor in anthropology, and he joined the team here at Nation's Finest in July of last year. Melissa, Wiley, thank you both so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Yep, thank you for having me, thank you. So uh, I want to start by asking just real quick, I, I already kind of provided a quick introduction for you guys, but could you give us a quick explanation of kind of your responsibilities, what you do there in Carson City, and really you know, how you help our veterans? Well, I'll go ahead and start, Mark. Um, my primary responsibility is uh, in charge of the MSU, and I'll, uh, I do an outreach program across the state of Nevada. I kind of spread the word of exactly how we can help veterans, and I will. Uh, I I um I contact community partners, and I develop a partnership with uh, health and human resources, uh, the sheriff's department, uh, the churches, uh, numerous other organizations, anywhere that can actually reach out to the vets that are in need of uh, any type of help. And when I'm not doing MSU, if I'm back in the office, I will help out uh, any anything I can in the office by doing case management and helping the other case managers. So it's a team effort here from where we're at in Carson City, and we all work together as a team to make a, an effective resource for the veterans that are in need out there. And I started with Nation's Finest about four years ago. I started off as a case manager, loved case management so much, and then my parlay into my next um, portion of Nation's Finest is as acting site director in Carson City, so I oversee the case management team, the site, the grant, and just love doing what we do out here in Carson. Awesome, thank you both for those, uh, for those introductions there. So now, now that everyone kind of understands what, uh, what both of you do, I wanna start with Wiley and ask, uh, what are, you mentioned MSUs earlier, and that's a reference to the mobile service units. Uh, what exactly are mobile service units and how do you use those to provide support services to our veterans in, in rural communities? Well, with the, uh, with the MSU, um, we have available resources that we can offer. Um, the, first, the first part is it allows me to actually um, um, drive to the local communities and meet with the veterans that are in need. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, I partner with a lot of the community partners. And so if I don't uh, physically see the vet, I'm actually able to find out who does need help. Um, in addition to that, uh, we've done a wide variety. Um, I've actually uh, uh, I've actually done some transport of vets to doctor's appointment because they don't have any transportation. And uh, we do that uh 
as a protocol with the COVID, we'll uh, wear masks and uh, make sure nobody's nobody's sick that I'm transporting. And I can uh, transport them to the doctor's uh, appointment and back to their residence um, all in the same day. And all I need is a, a notice and, uh, and I'll get the approval. And then I can actually pick the veteran up and take him uh, to and to the doctor and back uh, to his residence. And uh, and m- in addition to more resources that we use on that is um, I've actually delivered furniture to uh, veterans residences and um, and pretty much just met them where they're camping. I mean, it could be at an apartment. It could be actually out in the field where they're staying. Um, I have the ability to meet them anywhere as long as I know where I can meet them. And um, I'm set up with uh, my mobile equipment so I can actually enroll on the spot. And if there's something that I can't do for the veteran, I have uh, I will able to actually refer to them to other resources. And a lot of times we'll actually use the resources along with their own resources to give that veteran a complete package so that we can get them homed or Give them, get them to the resource that they need to actually succeed, and get them kind of back on the right path. So, well, that that sounds like some great service and support that you're able to actually get out there uh, and and provide to our veterans. So, if someone is watching or listening to this program, and they don't know if you know maybe if they should visit one of our permanent sites or if they should wait or if if a mobile service unit might be coming to their area, what advice would you give them? And also, along with that advice, who is eligible for for these services? Well, to to be eligible, uh, uh, primarily you have to be a veteran. Um, And we actually can run a report on the spot to see if they qualify for our program. Um, Even if they don't qualify for a program, we definitely will send them to the right resource where they can actually get help if we can't help them. Um, And there's an income level and it's uh, specific to each county and each state has their own type of uh, um, income limits that depending on the family size, which they would have to um, make underneath that amount. So it's basically being a veteran status and then their income status and then a need. So if they have a need, if they're getting ev- evicted or they're homeless, more than likely we can help them on the spot once we make sure that they qualify, be looking at the DD-214 and uh, doing a, a report on that. So, All right. Well, thank you, Wiley. I appreciate that. So uh, my next question here is, is back to Melissa. So, Melissa, if there's a community leader out there or maybe just a concerned citizen and they think it would be a good idea to have one of these mobile service units that we're talking about go out and visit a certain area or you know they just want to run those thoughts by you they're a little bit concerned how would they make that request and and also what advice would you give them so definitely call our offices Um, we're open to any dialogue Um, with that community partner we want to get these veterans assessed very quickly that's what's so great about the mobile service unit And something I did want to highlight, we don't just serve those veterans that are eligible for our program for SSVF through Nation's Finest. We also touch on those veterans who maybe are over income, but we're going to get them assessed very quickly, um, you know, maybe to safety, whether they're in crisis over a housing crisis, a mental health crisis, a healthcare crisis. We're going to assess them very, very rapidly and quickly. So they don't need to be eligible. We want to serve every single veteran that needs our assistance. So if a community partner wants to contact our offices or even Wiley directly, we're open to just getting the information so that we can then send Wiley out in the MSU or another staffer if he's not available to assess that veteran very, very quickly. That's something that's very special about the MSU. You know, we work with transportation, um, linkage to the VA, things like that. But sometimes there's a waiting list. So the MSU provides an opportunity to get that veteran assessed quickly, maybe linking them to their local VAMC, um, but also just to make sure that they have services, of course, case management, um, telehealth. We will, you know, meet them exactly where they're at. So contact our offices, contact Wiley. We are open to any kind of conversation. No veteran's need is too big or too small for us to assess them. 
That's great to know. I, I know a lot of veterans out there think, well, uh, if I'm not homeless, if, uh, if I'm not in dire straits in terms of income, but maybe I'm having some other form of crisis, they think they're, they're not eligible for, for these programs and maybe they're not eligible for every program, but that's, that's great to know that, that those folks can still call. Also great to know that, you know, that what you're talking about with these mobile service units kind of eliminates that wait time that we're all very familiar with, with a lot of veteran services that they're just so backed up, there's a long wait. So that, that's great to know that that provides some, some immediate service right away. I'd like to ask about the future of mobile service units, specifically in terms of, of mental health and, and telehealth services. And, uh, and do you see a potential for increased telehealth support, especially in remote areas? Absolutely, Mark. So telehealth is the wave of the future. We've seen it with COVID and it's going to happen beyond. So what we're wanting to do is outfit our units so it is safe, obviously, um, that it is private. They have their utmost privacy intact. So they can link with a service provider, whether it's in the unit or, you know, in an office somewhere. But we want to make sure that we have these office on wheels um, have that ability to have that utmost privacy. So that's something that's going to be a wave moving forward. So I'm going to give you an example. So our catchment area out in some of our outlying regions, our catchment area, our territory is, let's say, out in Elko, Nevada. Well, the Salt Lake City VA is the veterans catchment area. So we're going to be partnering with the Salt Lake City VA to provide services for these veterans who kind of have fallen through the cracks in a sense, because even though SSVF can protect them, they still maybe don't have the access to the health care or the mental health care. So we're going to be working diligently with the Salt Lake City VA to try to really come together, um, not just as nation's finest, but all of us together to provide the most effective services for these veterans. So, in July, we're going to have kind of a meet and greet. We've been doing a lot of our stuff remotely, which is fine, but there's nothing like that in-person contact. So we're gonna discuss effective measures and ways to have those veterans assessed on the spot with mental health, with potential healthcare needs. So that is definitely where we're heading as an agency and we're gonna see that in other agencies as well. So it's a really exciting thing COVID has taught us what we're what our capabilities are. So moving forward, we're going to be able to assess and address their needs on the spot with their privacy intact. And that's something we're really looking forward to overcoming um, moving forward. That's that's a great explanation there. And great to know that uh, those services that you may not be able to get with the VA. Maybe Nation's Finest can help with that. And the services you can't get at Nation's Finest, the VA can help. We're not, we're not competitors, but like you said, work hand in hand. And that's, that's not just in Carson City, right? That's, that's across all of our locations? Yes, I do want to highlight that. So we have a mobile service unit in the Reading region. They do great work. So this is something that's going to be expanding, not just in Carson. We are kind of the pilot program. Reading was a part of that pilot program, but if we're seeing that effectiveness for those veterans moving forward to get linked quickly, safely, getting their needs addressed, we're hoping to see this be a project that continues through all of our sites um, in, in all three of our states. We would love to see that moving forward because we've seen the effectiveness of it. So in the Nevada region, we have 17 counties. Northern Nevada and Nation's Finest serves 13 of them. So that vastness of the territory and what we've seen and the successes, you know, kind of speak for themselves. So we look forward to our sister sites. We love our Nation's Finest sister sites. We're hoping that they expand upon that as well at, at a later date. I, I think that's uh, the way things are going. If things... Uh with the mobile service units continue to be that successful. Uh, I wanna open it up to both of you at this point. And uh, just to kind of close out here, are there any final thoughts you'd like to share with someone who, again, may be watching or listening to this program who needs help or knows someone who needs help? Uh, what would your final thoughts be on that? 
I'm just going to kind of address what I stated before. There is no veteran need that's too big or too small for our agency. If you're over income, we'll guide you. If you're under income, we'll guide you. It, it, it's not a one size fits all. That's what's something that's very special about the MSU is having the ability to see a broad, broader, spectrum of vets, broader spectrum of veterans who deserve these resources. So reach out to us. It can be something as simple as a housing lead or a mental health, health need or maybe an educational benefit that you, you know, don't know about. Maybe we can hook you up to the post GI Bill. We're here to provide resources. If we can't do the work directly, we're going to find somebody that will. Wiley, any uh, any final thoughts for our viewers and listeners? Um, it's pretty much just like Melissa says. Um, if if we can't help you, we're going to find the resource that will help you. And uh, I have clients that are no longer in the program that still will call and ask for advice on certain aspects of what they're looking for. And I can guide them to the right location and then the right resource. And so even after you're not in our program, we are still here to help you. So that's it. that's about all I got right now. Well, that's great to know that uh, you guys are out there on the front lines helping our fellow veterans and, and providing those services, figuring out those solutions. And, and I know it's appreciated out there. And uh, I want to thank you both for joining us on the program today and also to thank you both for your continued service to our veterans. Our pleasure. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you for having us, Mark. And thank you to all of us, or excuse me, thank you to all of you who joined us today. We'll be back next week discussing issues relevant to veterans and those who care about them. And one more time, again, if you or a veteran you know needs help, or if you'd like to make a donation, please visit nationsfinest.org or call 833-468-9676. Again, thank you for joining us today. And as always, Carry on.